Good evening and welcome to the evening devotion. On this Friday, the 17th day of April, the year of our Lord 2020. Today we are going to be concluding our continuing series on the reactions surrounding the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have been looking at the four parts, and today we are looking at the fifth and final part in that series. First of all, we looked at the reaction. On Monday, we were looking at the reaction of the women. On Tuesday, we were looking at the reaction of the Roman soldiers. On Wednesday, we were looking at the reaction of the religious fraternity. And yesterday we were looking at part one on the reaction of the disciples of Jesus Christ. And so today we continue by looking at the other reaction of the disciples of Jesus Christ to this resurrection episode. Yesterday we considered that the disciples were doubtful. So... It was from, they moved from fear to doubt. When they received the information from the women that Jesus had resurrected, they did not believe it. Okay? Uh, maybe partly because uh, it is the women who brought the news. And specifically one of the women was Mary Magdalene, who had a history of... Uh, of demon possession. She was cured of seven demons by Jesus. And so maybe they thought that uh, the demons had come back. So anyway, they did not believe it. And the main emphasis yesterday was that it is not just Thomas who did not believe. It is the entire crew. All of them did not believe that Jesus had resurrected. So now today we move on from there to another reaction. See what happened is Jesus appeared to them and he appeared to them so that he could kind of reassure them. And so there was time lost. Remember when the angel appeared to the women at the tomb on the resurrection morning, the angel said to the women, the Lord is not here, he is risen. Go and tell the disciples that he has gone on to Galilee to meet with them as he had promised. But the reading of the Gospels will find that this was not to be, at least not immediately. He must have spent at least, uh, the disciples must have spent at least a week in Jerusalem before they moved to Galilee. And during this week, Jesus appeared to the disciples in different occasions. First of all, that resurrection day afternoon, he appeared to the two, Cleopas and his friend, on their way to Emmaus. And he also appeared to the disciples behind closed doors during the resurrection day. And he assured them. Unfortunately, when he appeared to the disciples on the resurrection day, one of the disciples, Thomas, was not there. And so when they looked for Thomas and they told him that, hey, the Lord has resurrected, Thomas was very, very categorical. He did not mince his words. He told them, you can tell me all you want to tell me, but unless I see with my own eyes and I touch the nail marks with my own hands and I put my hand on the side that was pierced by the Roman uh, spear. 
I am not boarding. Hii gari mimi siigi. You can say that he has reason but unless I see I will not believe it. So a week later one week after that incident the Lord appeared again to the disciples in their closed room in the upper room remember the room where they celebrated the last supper on Thursday before the crucifixion on Friday and remember we said that that became their home for for during their stay in Jerusalem so Jesus appears to them a week later and this time he is uh, Thomas is with the disciples with the other disciples and it is very important because when he appeared and Thomas was there so Thomas was looked in the eye and told uh-huh so okay you said you can't believe unless you see and touch okay come and see and touch and what did Thomas do Thomas is the second recorded incidence of worshiping Jesus as lord remember when the women left the tomb on their way to look for the disciples they met with the lord and they worshiped him now Thomas worshiped the Lord. When the Lord appeared to them again, the moment he met with the risen Lord, all doubt melted away. And it melted away so quickly and so fast so that a meeting with the risen lord thomas knew that this indeed was the lord himself not just jesus this was the lord and he bowed down he fell down and he worshiped so that was thomas and so if you are having your doubts like we said yesterday it is okay but those doubts should lead you to seek the truth like peter did so now today we look at the final reaction from the disciples finally they go to galilee they leave jerusalem and they go to meet with the lord in galilee we are not given the details are not very clear as to how long they took in Jerusalem and when they traveled back to Galilee but either way they finally traveled back to Galilee remember by this time all of them without exception they have met with the risen lord so their doubts were now settled the doubts of the resurrection were settled but now they are confronted by a new reaction which is what i would like us to consider this evening please go with me or mark somewhere that we are reading the gospel according to saint john chapter 21 i will read the uh, a few verses from verse 1 John 21 Okay I am reading the New King James version After these things now the things the incidences of the resurrection in Jerusalem after these things Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias and in this way he showed himself when you hear the sea of tiberias or the sea of galilee they refer to the same uh, the same place it's the sea of galilee or the sea of tiberias uh, the name tiberias was one of the emperors of you of of rome and in a way in, in trying to appease uh, the roman emperors they had named the sea after this particular 
Emperor Tiberius. So you will find the Sea of Tiberius, but it is really the Sea of Galilee. Just like here in Kenya, we have Lake Victoria. And you wonder why we have Lake Victoria. It is because we needed to appease the queen. That is why we named that lake, Lake Victoria. But even before the coming of the British, the lake was still there. Or even the way we have in Yahururu in Kenya, we have the Thompson Falls. As though uh, before the coming of uh, the white man, the falls was not there. So anyway, that is a story for another day. Let us stick to the Sea of Tiberias. Simon Peter, this is John 21 and verse 2. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. And remember, these most of these people, they were brought up in the Sea of Galilee. They were fishermen. So this is a place that they knew very well. Simon Peter said to them, this is verse 3, I am going fishing. They said to him, now the others who are with him, they said to him, we are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Let us leave it there for, for now. Now remember, Jesus called these people from their business trade. And when they, they were called, they were given a new commission. They were told that leave your nets now. I am going to make you fishers of men. Now, fast forward three years later, the, the, the issues of the crucifixion in Jerusalem and the resurrection, and now they are back to Galilee. And Jesus said that he would meet with them there, but he did not indicate when. So they went and sat and sat and waited. We don't know exactly how many days passed, but evidently some time passed. And when that time passed, Peter, who was by now, was the, Peter was the de facto leader of this group of uh, disciples. He said, now, you know, you guys, you can continue spending your time here waiting for the Lord to appear. But as for me, I think there is something better for me to do. I'm going fishing. Which brings me now to the final reaction of the disciples, which I would like us to consider and to ponder. The disciples moved from fear to doubt to faith to impatience. What we see in this story given by John is the impatience of the disciples. They did not know the whereabouts of the Lord. They did not know whether Jesus was still in Jerusalem or whether he was in Galilee or whether he was in Judea. They did not know where he was. Because now gone were the days when they used to move together. Remember even back in Jerusalem, he just bumped into them through closed doors on two occasions. He appeared without notice. He disappeared without notice. Now here they are waiting for him in Galilee and they don't know when he was going to appear. They became impatient. And Peter, their leader, led in the impatience. So instead of sitting there and waiting for the Lord to appear to them, they decided, no, we have something better to do. Let us go and do some trade. 
So they went. Peter said, I'm going. And when he said, I'm going, even the others said, we are coming with you. Because, you know, this is the burden of leadership. When you are a leader, you have to be very careful what you do. Because what you do is likely to be followed by your followers. So that is why it is important as a leader, it is important for you to show restraint and to provide leadership. Because if you don't provide leadership, what will happen to the people that are looking up to you? So here is Peter. Peter says, I am not staying here waiting. I am going to fish. And what, does, what happens to the others? They say, okay, if our leader is going fishing, we are also going fishing. So they were impatient. And in their impatience, they thought that they could do something productive. And so they went. And the Bible says they fished the whole night and they caught nothing. Sometimes we find ourselves impatient. Sometimes the Lord has said, wait. And instead of us waiting, we decide to engage ourselves in other activities that are not part of our calling. When Peter and the other disciples had been called, they were called to leave what they were doing so that they, can, they could embrace the new calling. Peter now goes back fishing. Yet he had been told that you will be fishers of men. Instead of giving testimony to the people who had not gone to Jerusalem, but were only hearing about the stories that happened in Jerusalem, which was many, many miles away from Galilee, they went fishing. What a wasted opportunity. I would have thought that by now, they were sharing the news of Jesus' resurrection with the villagers back in Galilee. But no, what did they do? They decided to go back fishing. They were impatient. And these things are recorded in scripture for our instruction. How many times have we found ourselves impatient? We want to wait upon the Lord. We are quick to quote the, the text of Isaiah 40. That they that wait upon the Lord are renewed in strength. Yet when it comes to the practicalities of applying that verse, we are found wanting. We are impatient. When we heard that Nairobi, our capital city, had been locked for 21 days, we couldn't wait for those 21 days. So every day that has passed, we have seen people trying to sneak in and to sneak out of the city. Impatience is our second name. When the Lord tells you to wait, he means it. He means wait. These people were supposed to go and wait for Jesus. Wait for instruction. Do nothing else. Go and wait. The fact that we have been told to wait does not mean that our call has been invalidated. The fact that we have been called to wait does not mean that the plans of the Lord has been abandoned. And one of the lessons that we must learn in these times of the pandemic of this COVID-19, we must learn to be patient. We are told that if you get into contact 
with a person who is positive to the COVID-19, you have to quarantine yourself for 14 days. And that is all about being patient, sitting, waiting. And I want to invite you to look at this story of Peter and the other disciples. In their impatience, they forgot and put aside their call. And when they went to do their trade, we are told that they caught nothing. They caught nothing. In other words, there was no fruit for their labor. And most of us, whenever the Lord wants us to wait for him, before we make the next move, whenever we are impatient, the results are disastrous. We can give a few examples. Maybe the best example is the example of King Saul. He was going to fight his enemies. But it was decreed that before going to war, there was needed to sacrifice to the Lord. And so the enemies were coming in. They were encroaching. And Samuel, who was the bona fide high priest who was supposed to do all to conduct the sacrifice was delaying and you know what happened saul in his impatience decided that he can also offer the sacrifice and the results were disastrous whenever we become impatient the results are disastrous even in the Koyo folklore, there is a saying that Nyagaki ahekire ruo mwanagekua. There is need for us to be patient. To be patient as we wait for the Lord. To be patient with one another as they come round. And I want to ask you to exercise patience, particularly those of us who are at home. More than ever, you need to be patient with your spouse. You need to be patient with your children. We need to be patient with each other because these are times when the stress levels are very high. Don't be rash, be patient. And because this thing has happened with the full knowledge of God, God knows for how long this will take. I pray that we can have the patience to wait on the Lord to work on us. And because we don't know why he visited this thing upon us at such a time as this, we can only wait upon him and trust his judgment and trust that all things ultimately will work together for good. And so Jesus finally appeared to Peter and the disciples. And when he appeared to them, they did not even know him. And they asked him, he asked them, children, have you any food? And they said, no, we have nothing. And so it is important that we be patient. Let us not have the impatience of Peter and his friends, but let us be patient. Because in the fullness of time, all things, all things, including this pandemic, all things will work together for good for those who love God. He knows what he is doing and we can trust him. In the meantime, let us wait patiently for his deliverance.
Let us wait patiently for his time. Let us continue seeking him. But in seeking him, we must not be impatient. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all of us say, Amen. Shall we bow in prayer? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because of the lessons that we continue to learn. And today we want to thank you because of the lesson of the impatience of the disciples. We pray that, Lord, you may help us to be patient, to wait for you patiently, and to be patient with each other. Many times we have been impatient. Even during this time of staying home and work being closed and during this time of this pandemic, we are impatient. And we would like to confess to you that sometimes we are finding it hard to wait for you. And so we pray that you may give us the grace to be patient. Give us the grace to wait upon you. Because those who wait upon you are never disappointed. And because all things ultimately work together for good, we pray that this good that you are preparing for us may come. In the meantime, O oh God, we continue to pray that, Lord, you may hasten the cure, lest we give up. So help us to be patient. And when sometimes we feel weak, waiting for you and waiting upon you, we ask that you may come. And even in accordance to your word in Isaiah chapter 40, come and renew our strength. We honor you and we praise you. We pray for the sick. We ask that you may heal them. We pray for those who have lost their loved ones and we pray that your heart of comfort be upon them. We pray for those who are feeling depressed because of loss of income, loss of jobs, and many, many, many of us are impatient and we are asking when it is that we shall resume our jobs and our businesses and when lives will come back to normal. We pray that, Lord, during these uncertain times, grant us the grace to wait upon you. Grant us the grace to be patient for you. Hear our prayer. Meet with each and every one of us at our points of need. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you very much. And God bless you. May the Lord grant you the grace of patience. Asanteni sana. See you tomorrow. God willing. And we are going to 